We are ready for you, Ms. Walsh. Thank you so much. Good morning, panel members. I'm Laura Walsh on behalf of the Surfrider Foundation. Yes, I'll be presenting with Susan Jordan of the Coastal Action Protection Network, and she'll be in person after I speak. We are asking today that the commission please deny the proposed local coastal plan amendment. Next slide, please. The very first impression I wanna make clear is that Huntington Beach is a community that is already very vulnerable to flooding. The Magnolia Tank Farm site already floods on king tides. Next slide, please. These are photos from 2019, 2020, and 2022. Flooding is nothing new here. The developer acknowledges this inherently with a site plan that proposes to raise the development to essentially turn it into an island. This is problematic for reasons I will discuss in a minute. Next slide, please. But essentially, this is an area that floods and is going to flood more. This is a quote by Patrick Bernard, a respected USGS scientist who worked on the 2022 NOAA sea level rise technical report. He's speaking to the Los Angeles Times, essentially calling out Huntington Beach as one of the more vulnerable communities to sea level rise in all of California due to its low lying nature. Next slide, please. Sea level rise risk has been well established in this area, so I'm just going to walk us through some sea level rise projections and modeling from the leading documented sources. The first is Virtual Planet. Virtual Planet has been used by local governments to simulate sea level rise scenarios in places like Santa Cruz and Elkhorn Slough. Nonprofits also worked with Virtual Planet to get a scenario modeled for this site previously and related to the nearby Poseidon desalination facility proposal that was before this commission. This is what the site looks like with 4.1 feet and 6.6 .6 feet of sea level rise, as well as 100 year storms, which of course are becoming more frequent. The 6.6 .6 foot scenario that you can see at the bottom shows the site completely flooded. Next slide, please. The NOAA sea level rise viewer also shows flooding with as little as two feet of sea level rise, which could be a scenario just around the mid century bend. That flooding becomes episodic with as little as 3.5 feet of sea level rise. Next slide, please. There is a flood wall in this area, but I want to make clear that that is also vulnerable to overtopping. The city sea level rise vulnerability assessment runs a bathtub analysis that shows the area flooded by overtopping at 4.9 feet of sea level rise. Thus, this is an area that we already know is unsafe and will require further armoring to reduce further future safety risks. Flooding, as has been extensively described today, can be a really big deal in this area because the water sticks around. This area faces problems flushing out due to stormwater infrastructure being over capacity and getting clogged. And so adding to that demand pos um, poses a pretty big issue. Next slide, please. The developers proposed grading to elevate the site. While this might mitigate some flooding impacts to the site itself, the proposal displaces runoff and reduces the permeability of the area, exacerbating flood risk to the surrounding community. The assets that are nearby that could be affected by this are a Superfund site, an AEF power plant, and single-family residences. Obviously, these are assets that the Commission would not want to be actively jeopardizing. Next slide, please. The city should be prioritizing adaptation planning. The city should ensure, in particular, that steps are being made to make sure that the toxic Superfund site doesn't flood. The groundwater table in this area is as little as three feet below the surface of the ground. With this area being so low lying and groundwater flooding causing sea level rise, really not that extensively studied, citing more development in this area where it would preclude adaptation planning could be considered pretty irresponsible. Adaptation planning should also determine how to keep the natural gas plant running and how to maintain access to the nearby residences as well as keep them safe. Uh, this slide shows uh, a pretty rational process for getting this done it to, um, after working off of the first step, which is the city sea level rise vulnerability assessment, which has been completed, and moving on to step two, which would be analyzing necessary strategies for building resilience. That's being done through the Coastal Resilience Plan and the LUP Coastal Element that were described. Those are unfinished, and I just want to point out the top two strategies or two of the top strategies being considered in the Coastal Resilience Plan are managed retreat and wetland restoration. Both of those are strategies that re could require the current zoning and space provided by the parcel. Once the city has determined whether the MTF site is needed to facilitate adaptation, that would be the appropriate time for the city to decide whether or not to resubmit for this amendment. Next slide, please. I'll pass this off to Susan with the final message that approving this LCPA is the definition of putting the cart before the horse. That cart will potentially cause flooding, toxic waste contamination, and power plant failure instead of building community resilience to sea level rise. 
Our takeaways are that this is an area highly vulnerable to sea level rise due to its low lying position. The area is going to experience more flooding. This flooding will put the surrounding community and assets at risk if not properly planned for. And this piece of land should be evaluated for adaptation, not rezoned to facilitate exacerbated risk. This decision to deny the amendment would not just be the high-minded thing to do. It's consistent, of course, with the commission's mandate to site development so that it minimizes risk to life and property as provided for by Coastal Act Section 30253. SB1 passed by the state legislature in 2021 also provides that this commission consider sea level rise in decision-making. Considering sea level rise in this case means considering how the broad assets in this area will be affected by related flooding and rezoning. Having a parcel of land near the coast and adjacent to these assets is a rare opportunity to preserve space and use for clients building. We ask that the commission please not sacrifice this unique opportunity. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, Susan Jordan, uh, director of the California Coastal Protection Network. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the discrepancies between what they're describing they intend to do and what they're actually allowed to do or not required to do. Um, we're very, Surfrider and CCPN are very familiar with this site, given its proximity to the once proposed Poseidon Huntington Beach desal plant. Um, this commission denied that in 2022, um, in large part because of the hazards that do exist in this area. Poseidon, too, tried to tell the commission there was no risk. That was rebutted forcefully by your staff. Next slide. But what has truly troubled me is the shocking difference between what the owner of the MTF site has portrayed to decision makers as the project's many benefits and commitments versus what they're actually required to provide. Just one case in point is the letter from the Orange County delegation that describes the Magnolia Tank Farm as a 250 unit housing project, including 25 low income housing units. Sounds great, but there's a problem here. Despite what the owner has presented in ever escalating promises to a number of proponents, some in this very room who I consider colleagues, there is absolutely no requirement to build on-site affordable housing in the specific plan that was submitted to you. What the specific plan does say in the two brief sentences devoted to affordable housing is that the proposed owning requires all new residential construction to include 10% affordable units, or the important or, that the owner can simply write a check for in-lieu fees to satisfy 100% of their affordable housing obligation. So, no guarantee or requirement for affordable housing. And since there is no absolute requirement to actually build any on-site affordable housing, the promise to provide a set-aside for hotel workers which is an excellent idea, which I support, and a great PR talking point. But if the owner or a future developer opts to pay the in-lieu fee, there will be no on-site affordable housing for anybody, including hotel workers. Next slide, please. Ditto for rental housing, which has suddenly popped up in their latest PR materials. The only problem is that all of the 250 housing units in the specific plan are described as for sale and not for rent. Next slide, please. And then there's all those benefits the owner touts in their PR materials. Who wouldn't be swayed by a $1 million donation to a library or new play equipment or other park improvements? Next slide, please. The only problem here is that those benefits are not required either. In fact, the city made it abundantly clear in the development agreement with the owner that the city retains absolute discretion, it's all there, um, on whether or not to fund those improvements, and all the owner or future developer has to do is write a check. Next slide, please. Most disturbing to me is how the owner has described its intentions for this site, and let's be clear, the owner is no newcomer to the real estate game. To start the owner's own website, self-describes its business strategy, buy as a discount, increase value by various strategies, including entitlements, sell the asset for the highest potential price. This page on their website specifically devoted to the Magnolia Tank Farm states that the business plan for the Magnolia Tank Farm is to process entitlements for approximately 250 single family units. This is repeated when describing the status in the business plan for the site. The status is entitlements in process, 
The business plan is to secure land entitlements. There is not one word about actually building the proposed development. Given that the development agreement with the city allows the owner to transfer or sell the asset at any point during its term, there is nothing stopping this owner from getting the entitlements he seeks here and turning around and selling the property. And there is nothing stopping this owner or any new owner from simply writing a check to cover 100% of the affordable housing obligation and the community benefits cited above. Next slide. The MTF owner has waged a sophisticated campaign to decision makers and stakeholders to convince them to support their project. In the last two years, not one year as the slide said, they have spent over 222,000 on one of the top lobbying firms in Sacramento. They have painted a glowing picture filled with shiny objects they promise, but which they are not required to deliver. Because otherwise, why on earth would anyone think it was a good idea to build housing and a hotel sandwiched between a new power plant and an unremediated California Superfund site in an area that is already experiencing the hard reality of sea level rise and related hazards. The commission is, next slide please. The commission is required to take sea level rise and related risks into consideration. We do not believe that this is consistent with the Coastal Act and we believe it should be denied. Also one more note on, on Department of Toxic Substance Control, they, they make a finding, but they do not analyze for coastal hazards or sea level rise, which is gonna be really the problem here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you bring up our presentation, please? Uh, Good morning, commissioners. My name is Ray Heimstra, and I'm the associate director at Orange County Coastkeeper. We oppose this local coastal plan amendment because this site is the wrong location for any permanent housing or other structures that will need flood protection. We don't say this lightly. In fact, this is the first time in our 23 year history that we have opposed a housing development. I'm a retired Teamster Union member, and I understand and respect the position of the union members here today, but this is the wrong place for this project. The site is just 150 feet away from the proposed Poseidon desalination project that unanimous, unanimously denied a coastal development permit just last year. For many of the same reasons, the current staff report recommends denial. A coalition of organizations, many of which are here today opposing this LCP amendment, did an in, in extensive investigation into the hazards in this area. The effort produced a fact-based analysis of the significant hazards associated with this site using the most recent data available. This work details the site's vulnerability to flooding, tsunami, sea level rise, earthquakes, and its proximity to the Ascon Toxic Waste Superfund site. These risks are explained in detail in our comment letter and the video that was provided with it. The project proponents have attempted to focus their talking points on the tank farm site alone, without considering the connection to the surrounding area. Next slide, please. The fact is, is that you don't have to look far into the future to see how serious an issue flooding is in this area. I have visited the tank farm site each of the last three years during King Tides and it has been flooded every time. This is actually a good thing as it keeps water out of the adjacent neighborhoods that already routinely experience flood rain events. Next slide, please. This project is not going to provide any additional flooding relief for the surrounding neighborhood. As sea levels rise and flooding in the area increases, the project site will increasingly become an island where the residents and visitors will have trouble getting out, emergency services will have trouble getting in, and the calls for billions of dollars in additional flood protection and other government bailouts will increase. Your decision to deny the LCP change will avoid all of this and leave us options to the inevitable sea level rise. Insurers are already leaving California due to their financial losses at high-risk sites like this. Next slide, please. This zone is, site is zoned the way it is for good reason. It's currently being used as a vehicle storage lot, and that's just one of the many potential appropriate uses that fit with the significant risks at the site. This decision is unique in that there are currently no structures you need to work around or protect in the future. You denied a permit for the Poseidon project in large part due to the hazards associated with the site and you should deny this proposed LCP amendment too. Thank you. Hi, 
My name is Lisa Swanson and I'm a core volunteer with Surf Rider Foundation. For over 13 years, I have owned a home in Southeast Huntington Beach, less than a mile from the Magnolia Tank Farm. I am here today to support your staff's recommendation and urge you to deny the request to change the current land use designation and zoning for this property. With the flooding and industrial contamination hazards present in this area, it is simply not the right location for a residential and commercial development. As a homeowner, I am particularly concerned about the current flooding risks in Southeast Huntington. I regularly run and ride my bike along Magnolia Street adjacent to the tank farm. The stretch of Magnolia Street was a standing pond for several days following the storms earlier this year, and the grassy area next to the street regularly turns into a swamp. These hazards will only become worse over time due to rising sea levels and more extreme weather conditions. Many homes, schools, roads, and significant infrastructure, including the power plant and wastewater treatment plant, in this area are at risk due to sea level rise. Failure of the wastewater treatment plant alone would be catastrophic to our community. These issues need to be addressed in a thoughtful manner now or the consequences could be dire. With the existing land use designation, the site could be used to address flooding hazard by providing a reservoir, installation of pumping facilities or other adaption measures changing the land use designation and developing the property for residential and commercial use will just exacerbate the current flooding hazard. My concerns regarding this development go beyond just protecting the valuable asset, which is my home. I had a 35 year career in environmental affairs and I'm a registered professional chemical engineer. So I have closely followed the remediation of the ASCON Superfund site. Although the developer claims the Magnolia Tank Farm is safe for development, this certainly does not mean that contamination is not present and that future changes to the site from development or sea level rise will not mobilize the contaminants. This could expose construction workers and future residents to harmful chemicals and impact neighboring air and water quality. Similar to my comments on the proposed Poseidon desal plant, I'm not against the idea of building additional housing in Huntington Beach, particularly affordable housing, but this is simply not the right location. Thank you to the staff, for the development of an excellent report supporting their recommendation. And thank you, commissioners, for providing me the opportunity to comment. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Nancy Bucos. I am a 47 year resident of Huntington Beach. I am not paid to be here. Um, I just am a mom and a grandma, and I'm really concerned. The last time I was able to speak was at the Poseidon hearing, and I was thrilled that you heard us. So I'm praying that you hear me again because I'm just a resident, and um, I live about 45 yards from the site, from the tank farm, from the Ascon landfill, and from the AES power plants. Um, I'm here in support of the staff recommendation to deny the LCP amendment for the Magnolia Tank Farm. And I think I'm the only one here from Huntington Beach other than Ed. I'm not sure what neighborhood you're in, Ed, but um, I'm down in Fashion Shores and we are right next to um, this site. The location is the first reason that I have a problem. Um, as with many of my neighbors, we have a problem um, with putting more homes into a site that sits so darn close to some really big monsters, AES, ASCON, and um, well, the sanitation district is all in our wheelhouse. This past year, we've had so much rain. We've had some enormous um, issues with road closures on Magnolia. The picture you saw with the dog, I took that. There was people wakeboarding on uh, the first three lanes of the highway. The city has done as well a job they can with the resources we have to mitigate flooding in my particular area of the town. Um, to say that there are other areas worse, yes. Uh, by Bolsa Chica, that, that road actually goes underwater. But I think we're a second close, we're a close second um, as far as severity of flooding. And the city had um, put in a four inch drain 
that really didn't work and we still have flooding with, with even moderate rainstorms. What's most fascinating is, and I sit as a two-story house right next to this location, is I can see inside the tank farm and it looked like it was just part of the wetlands. And some of the images you see really show that mother nature wants it one way. And I feel like we're putting a square into a circle when we talk about adding homes there. That brings me to my second point, putting homes next to the AES power plant. So nobody's talked about the big elephant in the room, but here it is. We have two operational power plants. Doesn't seem like the state's gonna um, eliminate either uh, the, the old units anytime soon because we need the electricity. But the problem is, is they're so darn close to where we wanna put these houses, um, the park with no parking lot. And um, you know, even in my neighborhood now, I'm not sure how many other neighbors in the community have this problem, but um, we have six air quality trailers with SUMA canisters measuring particulate matter 10 and 2.5, which cause asthma attacks, bronchitis, all kinds of illness. And um, like I said, I'm just somebody's mom, I'm not a scientist, but I can tell you this, there's a lot of people in our neighborhood that um, are really concerned about air quality and the agencies cannot determine when there are elevated levels exactly who is causing them. So that brings me to my last point, and um, boy, I could go on for more than four minutes about it, but my neighbor, the Ascon landfill, which is literally essentially separated by a chain link fence to the Magnolia tank farm. So five years ago when the tank farm um, became an idea and I heard about it, I got very involved, I read the EIR, and I noticed some similarities with the Ascon problem. And that had to do with some chemicals, um, some nasty chemicals of concern. And, um, they're, they're big chemicals, dibenza A anthracene and pen, benzo A pyrene, which after doing some research, uh, they, they were found on both sites. And yes, the tank farm has had remediation done even when they claimed that there was nothing wrong with it, that it was you know, almost a Christmas miracle that they had had absolutely no migration from the Ascon landfill, which again, has been separated for eight decades with a chain link fence. So, um, Again, second story window, I see the 25 foot elevation from Ascon and I see the rainwater going down into the low lying areas, which is the tank farm. So it didn't surprise me that we would see chemicals on both sides. Um, I'm not sure about the air quality problem working for these new families living closer. And you know why I'm here is because I am a family member and I bought my house. Nobody said you're living next to a chemical landfill, which is what Ascon is. And the fact that the site is, is basically essentially attached to the tank farm and has the tank farm being used for industrial purposes led to me to believe that the, our forefathers wanted that to be a buffer. They were really smart. They said, let's put our industry here, let's put a buffer here, and then we'll put some homes and a high school and a community center. And I think that's, that's genius and we should stick with what we know and not reinvent the wheel. I realize we need housing. This isn't the location for it. Um, with respect to housing and in our city, I'm really proud of the city that I live in. And um, I wanna put a shout out to the area itself. We have over 300 new homes in the Southeast Huntington Beach area, one mile radius from the Ascon and um, this, this location. So we are trying to do our best to put housing in. It's, it's hard though, you know, we have a city that's pretty built out. So, so to argue that, that, that there are people like myself that live next door, that you know, we're NIMBYs, we don't want this, that's not true. What we want is for you to not have to hear for new neighbors whose kids have asthma, who have problems with their health, because we ignored or minimized the true risks associated with placing families within 40 feet of a hazardous waste dump. And just so everybody's clear, it's not remediated. It's not been permitted to be remediated. They are pilot testing. And as of yesterday in my neighborhood, and I'm not joking, we have had gentlemen in suits walking around, sniffing the air. And when I said, what are you doing? They said, we work for ASCON and we're, we're looking for odors. I don't have a lot to say to that, except really, that's it, that's, that's, the, that's the plan. So I, I, don't have a lot of, um, I don't have a lot of confidence, but I, I pray that you look at the history, the generational waste, that lays underneath that soil, realize that anything can move it around an earthquake, groundwater moving up. And just, we, we make a responsible decision here today to, to deny this um, until, it, until you can fix ASCON and remediate it 100%, then you get, my, you get my thumbs up. Until then, I'm a concerned resident. I don't wanna see a bunch 
more thrown um, environmentally into my neighborhood because we already have enough illness in my neighborhood and it does exist. And people don't talk about that either. But we have cancer, we have autoimmune disease, we have a lot of healthy young people getting sick. Nobody wants to talk about that either, but it does exist. So with that being said, um, I, I thank you for the opportunity. I have had five years of, of waiting to come to you guys. And again, I'm just a resident over on Rhodesia Drive. Thank you for your time. Okay, I think that uh, ends the uh, organized testimony, if I understand.